Buenos dias. Um, my Spanish is very minimal, so I'll do it in English. <coughs> it's interesting that uh, Ricardo has uh, shown uh, some of uh, McLuhan, uh, McLaren's um, work because I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, as well. My talk, uh, I thought, uh, to begin the, this uh, symposium, to try to contrast uh, two things, visual music and instrumental playing. Maybe uh, the title could be visual music or instrumental playing. Um, Visual music has regained interest in our beginning of the 21st century as computer systems are more and more able to treat live real-time video. Thematically resembling certain art discourses of the early uh, part of the 20th century, a sort of Kandinsky connection in uh, time lapse, this renaissance of visual music testified to the porous nature of digital sounds and images. In popular culture, VJing has been with us for a long time now, thus creating a habit of these audiovisual spectacles, and it has had some influence on contemporary artistic practices, as the work of artists such as Christian Markley would exemplify it. I have been uh, doing research on instrumental playing in audiovisual art, and along the way, I encountered visual music. As a matter of fact, I was studying, I've been studying in recent years, uh, instruments uh, to play uh, visual and sound. And through that study, I eventually uh, stumbled on, um, on what is called visual music. Um, my aim here today is, is thus to uh, contrast two ways of talking about audiovisual works that may or may not be called visual music, but exist only if performed in a way or another. On the one hand, the more common approach of looking for equivalences between characteristics of sounds and of images, and, the other and on the other hand, um, uh, on which I will insist because it is less habitual, studying the instrumented aspect of these performances involving a type of interaction that I call instrumental playing. Instrumented uh, performances or instrumental playing in performance are characterized by the dynamics of three poles, the subject body, the instrument or instrumentation, and the performed audiovisual uh, forms. This tri triangulation can also have other poles like gestures or body gestures, rhythm, and audiovisual material. Or else the performer, mappings of gestures, sound and images, and audiovisual, um, the audiovisual work that is thus produced. This, re this research I started a long time ago, actually, um, when I showed two of Steiner Vazulka's works in an exhibition I did in 1994 at the National Gallery of Canada. Uh, Steiner uh, Vazulka, uh, who is an um, uh, Icelandish-born uh, Iceland -born, um, Artist, but lives in the has lived in the U.S. for many many years now. Uh, she was trained as a classical violinist, uh, a bit like Namjoon Paik, who was a trained pianist, and both were pioneers of video art and have been involved with technological tools and instruments to play video images since the 60s and early 70s. I've always been surprised how video art is ignored in attempts at writing the histories of what is called visual music. 
one of those who has tried to, uh, who has written a lot about visual music, uh, William Moritz, uh, who is an American film critic, uh, is an ex example of this when he writes in 1986 in a book called, uh, or an article called, Towards an Aesthetics of Visual Music, and I quote, many of the old masters of visual music are animators, Oscar Fischinger, James Whitney, Harry Smith, Jordan Belson, Norman McLaren, Alexeyev, and Len Lai. Just as are many of today's best practitioners, from independents like Sarah Petty to commercial creators of MTV rock videos. I'm amazed that in 1986, the year Steina Vezuka was doing a piece called Voice Windows, Someone uh, like uh, Moritz may write about visual music and MTV and not even mention the early works of Nader Pike, who made Global Groove in 1972, if one is looking for an ancestor of MTV music videos, nor of Steiner's work. Reasons for this oversight of seminal works in video art when looking at genealogy of visual music may be numerous. One reason would be ignorance, as cinema historians and theoreticians have always shown hesitations about video art, a consequence maybe of the specialization of cinema studies among other things. Another reason might be the diverging frame of reference between video and cinema when it comes to musical traditions. Video art stems as much out uh, of the world of audio technology, as Bill Viola uh, would put it, as from anything else in cinema. Consequently, video art finds roots in Pierre Schaeffer's music concrete, Stockhausen's electronic music, or John Cage's uh, chance operations. Um, <coughs> and uh, John Cage, John Cage uh, chance operations. And through Pike, fluxes and performance, uh, rather than some sonatas of Beethoven, Mahler, or the paintings of Kandinsky or Paul Klee. A last possible reason would be that video art, at least in its analog technology years, does not refer to the principles of film animation, which is frame-by-frame -frame animation, which informs some of the writing about cinema and visual music and is a distinctive determination of te film technology absent with analog video technology. So what is visual music? I often use the, defi the definition given by artist Paul Friedlander, who distinguishes three types of visual music. And I quote, the first kind, visual music is a means of converting music to images using a system of set of or set of rules which can be implemented as machine or computer code. Second kind, visual music is a means of expressing music in visual form, requiring the active involvement of an artist, designer, or director to interpret the music and find the means to express it visually. The third kind, visual mu music has no relationship with music as such although it may be viewed with or juxtaposed with music. Visual music is about creating visual relationships which change over time. It is primarily about abstract qualities of movement or changing form or color. I find this definition fairly accurate as it covers the broad categories of what is generally included in the idea of visual music. The first referred to diverse research for the invention of instruments to, ply, to play uh, light and sound, image and music, most often in the search for correspondences between sound music and moving images by mechanical, electromic, electromechanical, el electronic and digital means and devices. People like the famous Father Castell in the 17th century or Bainbridge Bishop and Alexander Wallace Remington in the 19th century 
uh, who created uh, light, what was called light organs or color organs. So there was all this, uh, these items over uh, the 19th century and even a good part of the uh, 20th century to uh, create these uh, basically organs, instruments, uh, keyboards that could play both uh, light, color, and sound together. Uh, the second definition would be well exemplified by the films of Hans Richter, Oscar Fischinger, or James and John Whitney, up to the v VJs, um, pra practices in which sound and images are created separately and the artist interpret one by the other. Finally, the third kind in which uh, Friedlander situates his own work and practice conceives of uh, visual music as an art form in itself that only retain from music the modulation of temporal and moving forms and structures and the rhythmic changes of forms and colors. Thomas Wilfred, uh, who created the instrument in the mid uh, uh, 20th century, called that art form Lumia, uh, which may or may not be accompanied by music, uh, by a sonic counterpart. And he wanted the, uh, this uh, art form to be an, an autonomous art form. So Wilfred, would uh, argue that uh, you could play Lumia as you play music, even though Lumia may not have music. It would only be uh, visual forms and movement. Although it is possible to use one of these three definitions or to mix elements pertaining to each in a particular dosage that suits one's, one's goal or practice, the question of instrumentation is rarely addressed in ways other than technical descriptions or how a particular device or software use correspondences between the realm of the senses as a logic for mapping uh, aspects of sounds and musical sounds with aspects of visual images. What is not discussed in these approaches is the centrality of the body in an instrumental uh, performance. Also another problem with these categories is that they don't allow for a good representation of the histories of relationships between music and the visual, visual arts in the last 60 years. In historical terms, uh, as uh, Jean-Yves Bosseur demonstrates in a book uh, ca uh, called in French, Music et art plastique, Interaction au XXe siècle, all along the last century, the meeting of visual arts practices and music goes from the search of correspondences, metaphors, and analogies in the tra tradition of Baudelaire or the Wagnerian Gesamtkunstwerk to an evolution uh, starting in the mid century, starting in the 50s, when this meeting took the form of an in interpenetration between diverse fields of activity and practice that started with the impulsion of John Cage and uh, Namjoon Pike. The novelty that Cage initiates and that Pike makes more obvious is the centrality of the body of embodiment of tactile involvement with instruments. In certain of Pike's work from the 60s, the body becomes part of the instrument as a resonating chambers, like in listening to music through the mouth. There's a famous picture of this um, piece by Pike, uh, which dates uh, 1963, where he has in his mouth the um, arm of, of a gramophone. And basically, he uh, puts the arm of the gramophone on a, on a record, and he becomes the resonating um, element that uh, makes the sound uh, um, hearable. One can think also of numerous of uh, numerous fluxus performances as examples of this emergence of the body on the scene of contemporary art. Not only the artist's body, but also the instrument's body. And uh, f again, if you see pictures of uh, per, uh, fluxus performances, you'll see that 
the instrument body is uh, also uh, a main element where either the, the, the instrument is destroyed or dragged on the, f uh, on the floor, things like that. So uh, from the 50s on, we see the, this um, uh, emergence of, the, of embodiment, re really. I would insist on this shift that took place in the, in the 60s uh, uh, on that brought the body and embodiment at the forefront. Numerous authors from Bernard Stiedler to André Leroy Gouran, passing by Jacques Derrida, or the more recent field of performance studies could be mentioned here as having established that human embodiment is mediated through language, tools, and instruments, objects that rely on anticipation and Im imagination, uh, the powers of invention. This shift in the arts took the form of uh, perform performative action and in audiovisual art of instrumental playing. We can trace this back in history in more or less clumsy forms according to the technology of an era, like the anecdote concerning Leon Theremin with his Illumovax, a colored light display used uh, during performances of uh, Scriabin's uh, Etude. Theremin placed the device at a distance ranging from 10 to 30 feet from his instrument, depending on the size of the, of the stage. And as he performed, colors evolving through the complete spectrum were beamed onto a dark background, or in certain cases, directly onto his face. In this instance, Theremin points his body, his face, to the core of the piece as visual reference to his playing. I want here to insist on a fundamental triangulation in instrumental playing that defines its performative aspect. The dynamic uh, uh, triangulation embodying the instrumentalist, the instrument, and the result generated by playing the instrument. <coughs> this dynamic triangulation constitutes a unit of double mediations that of the body playing the instrument and that of the instrument activated by gestures and returning tactile or haptic information to the body of the player. Now I want to uh, bring another uh, idea which is that of in instrumental cinema, which I don't, in don't invent. Um, uh, actually it was uh, invented or coined uh, in the 50s by a, film, a French film critic by the name of André Martin. Um, André Martin wrote in, the, in 1958, actually, in Les Cahiers du Cinéma, a series of analysis of Norman McLaren's work. It shows other ways of speaking about McLaren than our proponent of visual music would do. For the French critic, <coughs> instrumental cinema referred to McLaren's work of the 50s, like uh, Blinkity Blank, or some of the work we've seen just uh, before. I find in André Martin many themes associated to the notion of instrumental playing, notably the, the notion of play, uh, jeu in French, in French, or juego uh, in, in Espanol and the concept of materials, matériaux, we say in French, of playing with the materials through instruments. Martin writes to characterize McLaren's work, and I quote, a solitary cinema based on the mute battle with materials, that which cannot be fooled around or reasoned, which can only be convinced by tools, end of quote. He conceives of an instrumental autonomy, the instrument is objective and a quasi-other. Uh, it has its own me mediating features. It is, in, it is in the works of these materials that the artist finds cons constraints, dangers, suggestions, says Martin. McLaren's films of the 50s, according to him, go much beyond abstract mu musicalism which would be uh, actually what uh, visual music uh, is. 
Even though I don't think André Martin had a concept of instrumental playing as such, or, or as I understand it, I find in his thinking the intuition of this idea of the battle with the materials, as he calls it. Pierre Hébert, who's a Canadian film animator, who worked with Mac McLaren and worked at the National Film Board for uh, from 63 to 2000, actually. Um, for his part, Pierre Hébert goes further with the notion of instrumentals of an instrumental cinema, starting a series of performances in the 19 uh, in uh, 1986 with a modified 16 millimeter film projector accompanied by musicians and sometimes dancers, he wanted to do like musicians. Uh, so Pierre Hébert would, on stage, uh, he had this uh, 16 millimeter film projection uh, modified to allow him to actually draw directly on the film strip in performance. And so he would, uh, with musicians live on stage, would uh, do um, live performance uh, using film. Um, so Hébert is singular, uh, uh, sing is singular as he was back then, a rare case of exploration of live performance by means of ci the cinema apparatus. Nowadays, uh, Hébert uh, ironi ironically says that he was perhaps representing only one kind of vijaying avant la lettre. The choice of his form of performative cinematographic playing brought him to reflect on the place of the body in instrumental expression. Hébert writes about the body of the artist in anim animation cinema and goes over the thematics of the gestural body's traces in the filmic result on the screen. He, write, he writes, and I quote, one could talk of patience if this work would be measured at the temporal scale of the movements seen on the screen, but not if considered in relation to my immediate kinetic agitation with this flurry of energy, this shuffling of gestures. McLaren's gesture, as Pierre Hébert decided to explore it even further, is experienced through the bewildered body er erupting in the cinema cinematographic apparatus by inscribing its agitation against the dis disappearance of the subject. For Pierre Hébert, what was important in this experiment with the cinema apparatus is that, uh, as we can see, we've seen McLaren actually um, drawing on the film strip, but when we see the result, obviously his body is va has vanished. For Pierre Hébert, it was uh, important to try to uh, get the presence of the body uh, in the work. So in uh, doing these performances, he was able to assert the body in the work itself. Nowadays, Pierre Hébert uh, has developed a system based on Max MSP and Jitter, but he devised a setup where he still draw using felt on cellulose sheet, a camera capturing uh, the drawing gestures, and the, systems, the system allows the artist to play sequences and modify their serial structures, repetitions, their looping, and so on. In that, he shows an influence drawn from serial and re repetitive structures in music, while remaining, uh, remaining truthful to a principle of single frame animation. To conclude, Pierre Hébert uh, speaks of exp expression instrumentale, instrumental expression, which for him implies a reference to embodiment, specifically the instrumentalist uh, body, a manual action confronting material through instrumentation. For Hébert, the history of cinema can not only be equated with uh, stylistic history, but it has to take shape in the framework of a radical history of technology. I'll leave for now the last words to Pierre Hébert, who writes on, this, on his blog about instrumental expression, and I quote, 
The fact that, mo that the most important is produced from images, image sequences man manipulated live maintains at the heart of the process the corporeal dimension and the speed imperative that were so important in live engraving of 16 millimeter film. I see my performances as a short sort of fidelity to the idea of animation and as a practice of instrumental expression sealed up by a radical embodiment. Thank you.